What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Solitaire Chess. From the feedback that I've received, you guys are enjoying this, and I've had fun with it too, so we're going to be doing these much more often. Now, if you happen to miss the previous two episodes, this is where you have to guess White's move according to what was played in a particular game. So it's not necessarily the top stockfish move, but it's what do you think the person played in the game. Now, these games usually are either strong players or uh, somebody who played a good game. Okay, so you should still be looking for good moves, whether or not it matches stockfish, it, it might not, right? Um, a lot of people have said that the rating that you get after you complete this is inflated a little bit. And so I wanted to try something different just to see if this affects the score at all. So what I'm going to do this time is instead of having you pause the video, I'm going to be just stop. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to think myself for about 30 seconds to a minute, come up with my move. And then when I'm done with that time, I'm going to tell you guys, okay, I'm going to write down my move now. And that would be kind of your signal to wrap up your thinking process, write down your move as well. And then we'll check the score and, and see if you, you got it right or not. And I think this will even out, uh, you know, how long people are thinking, because I know some people were thinking like hardly at all, like 10 seconds, just making a move every time. And other people were taking a lot longer. So, uh, of course, if you want to pause and take longer, you know, I'm not going to stop you, but um, I want to just try it this way and see if it uh, maybe evens it out, like I said. So having said that, this is the game that we're going to look at. This is a game from 1969 between two players. I don't really know how strong they were, but just real quick, I'll show you how we got into this position. It's a King's Indian attack. So it's when basically white goes for the King's Indian type of setup. They're playing a little bit weird move order here, but they go for the King's Indian type of setup as white. So that's instead of the defense, it's the attack. Bishop g4, h3, bishop to f5. It is now white's turn. This is going to be the starting position for this episode of Solitaire Chess. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to think for about 30 seconds to a minute on each one. I'll let you know when I'm done thinking as I'm writing down my move. And then you guys can follow along with your pen and paper, of course. And then we'll check our scores. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, and um, I have my move ready, so I would suggest wrap up your thinking. One thing that I probably should point out that I didn't mention earlier, the name of this Solitaire Chess episode from the magazine that I'm pulling it from uh, is called The Power of Bishops. So uh, I, I'm just mentioning that because I was thinking about that as I was thinking of what move I wanted to play in this position. So sorry if I should have mentioned that sooner, but The Power of Bishops. Anyway, I have my move ready, and so I am going to write down uh, my move over here. All right, and I am going to suggest knight g to f3. All right, let's check and see if that is correct. That is not the correct move. Uh, the correct move is e4. So let me see if there's any partial credit for that. Okay, so you do get four points partial credit if you said knight g to f3. So I'm gonna give myself four points but you get six points if you said e4. And it mentions that this is a typical King's Indian type of move, playing e4, uh, and so, yeah, which it is. So, six points if you said e4. Black responds with d takes e4. Okay, let's go ahead and think, and then I'll let you know when the time is up. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and write down my move. I realize that wasn't a lot of time, but this one I believe is relatively straightforward, so I'm not gonna to spend too much time. All right, so if you have written down your move, the move that I'm suggesting is D takes E4. Let's see if that's correct. And that is the correct move for white. D takes E4, you get five points if you said that. So I'm gonna give myself five points. And you get two points partial credit if you captured with the knight or the bishop. So those aren't terrible moves, but generally speaking, a lot of times when you play the King's Indian and you push that pawn forward, when you do have an option to recapture with the pawn, it's just generally the, the way to go. Um, having that pawn on e4 gives you nice control of the center, gives you options of pushing, and it just makes a lot of sense. So. 
D takes E4, uh, like I said, five points. All right, black responds bishop to E6. And again, it's our turn. Let's go ahead and think what we're going to play, what we're going to play here. All right, I'm going to write down my move. So wrap up your thinking. And I'm going to suggest the move knight to e2. Let's see if that's correct. And that's not the correct move. The correct move is knight g to f3, which I was also thinking about, but I wasn't sure. So um five points if you said if you said knight g to f3 give yourself five points and yeah no points for me so i'm gonna get zero for my knight e2 idea all right black responds knight to a6 and go ahead it's your turn let's think what uh we would play All right, I'm gonna go ahead and write down my move. And the move that I am suggesting is castling kingside. Let's check what was played in the game. Castling kingside was indeed played in the game, so that's worth five points. So I'm gonna give myself five points for castles kingside. And no other partial credit, and black plays the move queen to a5. So again, go ahead and think through what do you want to play here. All right, I have a move. I'm going to go ahead and write it down. And the move that I'm going to suggest is C3. Let's see if that is correct. All right, that is not the correct move. The correct move was knight to D4. So... Knight to d4 is worth six points. So six points if you said knight to d4. Let me see if there's any partial credit. And no partial credit. So I'm going to get zero. I'm going to get zero for c3. And knight to d4 is played. Black castles queenside. All right. What move do you play as white? Let's think through this. All right, I've got a suggested move. I'm going to write it down. And the move I'm going to suggest is knight takes e6. All right, knight takes e6 is the correct move, and that is worth five points. So if you said knight takes e6, give yourself five points, which I will do. Black responds, f takes e6. And go ahead and think through what would you play here.
All right, I have a move. I'm going to write it down. And uh, the move that I'm suggesting is queen to e2. Let me check if that is correct. And queen e2 is indeed the correct move. And it's worth five points. So give yourself five points if you said queen to e2. All right. Black responds with g6. Go ahead and think through what do you play here. All right, I have a move. I'm going to write it down. And the move that I am suggesting is knight to c4. Let's see if that is correct. Knight to c4 is the correct move, and it's worth six points. So give yourself six points if you said knight to c4. And black responds with... Queen to c7. All right, so think through what are you going to play here. All right, I have my move. I'm going to write it down. And the move that I'm suggesting is bishop to f4. See if that is correct. It's on the next page. Bishop f4 is the correct move. And it is worth six points. So six points if you said... Bishop to f4. I can actually change my paper here so I don't see the next moves. It's kind of a little bit challenging not to see the moves that are coming ahead. Um, all right. Bishop f4, six points. Black responds with queen to d7. What do you play here? All right, this one is uh, a tough position for me um, because I have about three different moves that I would like to play. Yeah, a lot of moves I'd like to play. I'm going to choose one just for the sake of time and to keep it moving along, but um, in a real game, I would probably spend more time on this position. But for the sake of this one, I'm going to choose... This move, uh, I'm going to suggest knight to e5. Let's see if that's correct. It's not correct. It was my second move. Uh, so knight uh, e5 is not correct. It's rook f to d1. 
which I also wanted to play, but I could only choose one. So six points if you said rook f to d1, six points for this, and it says full credit for rook a to d1. So if you said either rook to the d file, you get six points. Unfortunately for me, I get zero for knight to e5. All right. So rook f to d1 was played in the game, and black played queen to e8. All right. It's your move again. What do you play here? All right, I'm gonna write down a move. And the move that I am going to suggest is knight to a5. Let's see if that's correct. Not the correct move. Uh, correct move, or the move that was played in the game, rook takes d8 check. And that is worth five points. I'm gonna get zero myself, so. Rook takes d8, and black responds with queen takes d8. All right, your move again. What do you play now as white? All right, I have a move. I'm going to write it down. And the move that I'm suggesting is rook to d1. Let me check if that is correct. Rook to d1 is the correct move, and it's worth five points. So give yourself five points for rook to d1. And black responds queen to e8. Your move again. All right, I'm going to write down a move. Um, not feeling super confident on this one, but I'm gonna write it down anyway. The move I'm gonna suggest, knight to a5. Let's see if that's correct. The move is not knight a5, it's bishop to f1, and it's worth seven points. So give yourself seven points if you said bishop to f1. And I'm going to get another zero. All right, so bishop f1 is played. Knight to d7 is black's response. And again, it's your turn. What do you play here?
All right, I have a move. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but I'm going to try it anyway. Just for the sake of time. The move I'm going to suggest is knight to e5. Let's see if that's correct. Not the correct move. The correct move is queen to e3. And queen to e3 is worth seven points. So give yourself seven points if you said queen to e3. Uh, you do get four points partial credit for knight to e5. So I'll give myself the four points partial credit. And all right, let's move on. So queen to e3, black plays c5. And what move do we play here? All right, so I've got a move. I'm going to write it down. And I'm going to go with uh, knight to e5 again. Um, so let's see this time. Again, not the right move. Queen to b3 was the correct move. Uh, queen to b3, you get seven points if you found that one. And... There's no partial credit, so I'm going to get another zero. And queen to b3 was played. Black responds with knight a to b8. And again, it's our move. All right, I've got a move. I'm going to write it down. And I'm going to suggest knight to a5. Let's see if that's correct. Knight to a5 is the right move, and it's worth seven points. So give yourself seven points for knight a5. And black responds with b6. So what do you play now? All right, I have a move. 
not feeling super confident on this, but got to make a decision. So I'm going to go with queen takes e6 is my suggestion. Let's see what was played in the game. And it is queen takes e6, and that's worth seven points. So give yourself seven points if you said queen takes e6. And there are there is some partial credit here. So um, two points. You get two points if you said knight to c4, just saving the knight. And you get five points if you said bishop takes b8 all right so two for this five for bishop takes b8 and then seven for the correct move queen takes e6 and oh that's it black resigns okay that's the end of the game interesting so let's go ahead uh while we're at this position and just kind of finish it out because i was not 100 percent convinced myself after black takes the knight, how we follow up. I was thinking bishop here looks really good, but I didn't see like a concrete way to win after takes, takes, king goes here. So was, was I missing? Ah, oh, it's there it is. I didn't see that when I said queen takes e6. I see it now, but I didn't see it then. The knight's pinned. You can't block with the knight. You have to move and it's checkmate, I see. Okay. And of course, if the knight doesn't take the bishop and the king just moves, then you have probably just bishop takes knight because this is pinned. Looks pretty good. Uh, and black is just completely falling apart. So, all right. What we need to do now is take your piece of paper, sum up all your scores, and we'll check it against the rating chart. And we'll see if uh, this time it was inflated or not as well. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I'll show you the, uh, the chart here in just a second. Okay, I did not do awesome. Um, I just summed it up and I got 59 points. So I'm going to go check the chart here. I believe that's not a very good score though. Yeah, 59 points is putting me in the 1800 to 1999 rating range. I think that's what I got last time too. So I know a lot of people are saying that they're getting extremely inflated ratings, but... Um, it's not the case for me. I'm, I'm getting lower, uh, at least in two out of three, I've gotten lower than, than my actual rating. So I don't know. I think, you know, um, if you do a lot of tactics and you do a lot of puzzles, maybe it's it's easier to find these moves. But if, you know, when, when it comes in your game, sometimes it can be a little bit more difficult, right, to, to figure it all out. So let's go ahead and go back and I'll talk through a little bit about what I was thinking about and we'll turn on Stockfish as well and see what Stockfish says about this game. So let's go back to the starting position here. And I'll turn on Stockfish. All right, so yeah, E4 definitely is a standard move in the King's Indian. And so, you know, sometimes you can delay it though. That's why I was thinking just develop castle, you know, we'll play E4 later. But I guess the fact that we had it available, we have, you know, three pieces supporting it. Uh, why not go ahead and, and get the pawn out there? And so make it makes sense. Gains a tempo on the bishop. Like I said, normally you want to recapture with the pawn when you play this King's Indian type of setup. Most of the time. Occasionally, it makes sense to take with the knight and, you know, just kind of leave that diagonal open for the bishop. But a lot of times that pawn in, in the center really does a nice job of controlling the center. And so that's just kind of the way to respond. Um, knight g to f3, yeah, I mean, it's it's a natural developing move, right? It, it just makes a lot of sense. The reason I was suggesting knight to e2 was because I was thinking about knight to f4 as a way to go after the bishop, as opposed to, like, here, black can play h6 or something, you know, can't really get the bishop as easily as maybe knight f4. Also, it allows the bishop to continue to stay on the open diagonal, um, and maybe even knight to d4, but you can also go to d4 here. So, yeah, it makes sense why knight g g f3 is a little bit better although stockfish says both of those moves are equal as far as the evaluation is concerned knight to a6 um what did i suggest here i'm gonna actually look and see yeah just castling so i mean it, 
almost always when you play the King's Indian, it makes sense to just castle early when you can. It's a move you're going to want to play pretty much nine times out of 10. And so if you can do it early, why not go ahead and do it? And so it makes a lot of sense. And Stockfish agrees with that too. Queen to a5. I think I suggested c3 here. Yeah. So c3 is one of those moves that it's just kind of a natural... You play it a lot in the King's Indian. It, it creates an open diagonal for your queen. You can put your queen on c2 and kind of monitor the center that way. You can play b4 later and you know chase away the queen or whatever. It stops the knight from coming in. It's just one of those natural looking moves. That's why I recommended it. Uh, Stockfish does like c3, but also knight to d4, which is slightly better. So I guess the point here is if you can go for the bishop, Whenever you play the King's Indian, this bishop usually can be strong if the other bishop doesn't oppose it and trade it off. And so when you have the opportunity here to go and capture that, I think that's why knight d4 is such a strong move. And so, yeah, not, Stockfish is saying already it's like plus four for white, which is crazy. Uh, it doesn't look like black made too many mistakes, but a big one that I'm noticing is not moving this pawn. Um, this bishop is, is stuck, right? I, I don't know how black is going to get that bishop into the game anytime soon. They're making too many moves over here on the queen side, and they're neglecting their development, I think, is what's what's going on. So knight to d4, castles. I mean, look at this opportunity. I think this move makes a lot of sense. It's pretty obvious, right? Like, if you can mess up your opponent's pawn structure at the same time as getting rid of the annoying bishop that's going to counter your bishop, at the same time blocking in this guy, right? Like, now it's even more blocked in because you can't play e6 to get it out. You have to maybe go over here like this, right? And so... Really bad uh, pawn structure for, for black. So that's why knight takes e6 is pretty straightforward. Queen to e2. Uh, it's another one of those moves that, you know, if you don't play c3 and put the queen somewhere over here, a lot of times it will go to e2. The point is you want to connect your rooks, right? This is very common in chess. After you develop your pieces, connect the rooks. And in this case, there's a rook sitting there pinning our knight, which we don't want to leave pieces in a pin, even though it's maybe not immediately dangerous. It could be in the future. And so getting out of that pin makes a lot of sense. By the way, I should mention in the King's Indian, a lot of times this bishop sits back here and comes out later, right? And that's exactly what we saw in this game. You do other things, you get your king castled. And this is almost always going to be one of the last pieces that gets developed when you play the King's Indian. So there's nothing really wrong with, with that. All right, so queen e2. Um, g6 was played. Yeah, knight to c4. Basically we we need to keep going, right? We've got our king safe. These pieces are developed. This guy's next. Option would be something like b3 and bishop b2, but that's pretty slow. This way, it's with tempo, which is really nice. It also gives the, the bishop a lot of options. And the queen is kind of in an awkward spot. Like, where's it going to go? I mean, it doesn't have a ton of places that make a lot of sense. So knight to c4 all around just makes, it's like, uh, makes a lot of sense. All right. Again, tempo and tempo, one, two, right right in a row. We wanted to develop this bishop anyway, and now we can do it with tempo. And I did see this when I suggested knight to c4, that I wanted to follow it up with bishop f4, because e5 is not an option, because we have our knight controlling it, right? So going back here, I was initially thinking about knight to b3, as well as knight to c4, but then I realized knight to c4 actually controls e4, which could be very useful in this situation. So... It all kind of comes together, and now black's really in a in a mess. Lots of good moves, I felt like, for white here. I liked knight to e5 because, again, with tempo, it's also threatening the fork, and so it would force the queen to go back. And blockades the pawns. The bishop still can't get out. You can still bring your rooks over. Um, but Stockfish, let's see. Yeah, Stockfish doesn't like this as much. No, not quite as good as what was played in the game. Rook over. And I guess the major point is that, like we saw later in the game, this knight was used over here on the queen side with knight to a5 at some point. And you can't do that if you're over here on e5. And actually, once you go to e5, it's still a good square, but it, you know you can't make that threat over here like we did. So I guess that's kind of the, the major difference. Um, a lot of the time, when you have tension with the rooks like this, you don't want to trade. And so that's why I didn't suggest this move. I felt like I'm happy with my rook there. I don't really need to trade. But this position is kind of an exception. And the exception is we have both rooks that have access to the file. Black only has the one, right? This guy is stuck. Remember that bishop that's still not developed? Because of that, it makes sense in this case to actually trade 
and then we can go ahead and regain the file and we essentially get the exact same position except we've removed these rooks right which i mean that's a good trade we're removing a, a rook that black has that's actually defending with the rook of ours is sitting in the corner and we don't even really waste any time to do that so in hindsight makes total sense um but like i said ge the general principle is don't trade into your opponent on an open file let them trade into you but in this case it was an exception and so that's why i didn't consider that i think i said what did i say some other move i believe um knight to e5 or something yeah i think i was saying that so um anyway makes a lot of sense to do this to trade and then bring the rook over okay queen e8 bishop to f1 that's a tough move to find um what did i suggest here I think I said knight to a5. Yeah, bishop to f1. Stockfish doesn't like it as much. No, nope, Stockfish likes it. It's pretty good. Also queen e3. Yeah, it's a good idea. It's a really good idea, right? Your bishop is kind of stuck. Um, and so you can just change the diagonal, and now it's playing a role. It's playing a role in this, uh, in this position. And actually, there's this amazing line. I don't know how many of you guys saw this in the game, but if black plays bishop to g7... There's a checkmate. There's a checkmate for white. So if you didn't see this, now you could pause if you'd like and try to find it. White to play and win. Checkmate in five moves. And if you had a chance to look at that, the move is knight to b6 check. And the first thing we need to understand is the king can't move. Because of the way our rook and bishop are placed, the king cannot move. So has to take us. And then we can follow up with the sacrifice and look at this. I mean, this is a beautiful checkmate. You got the bishops coming across, you have the rook coming down and that's it. So really nice idea. And uh, it's it's actually hard, hard to spot, right? If you're playing as black, it's not easy to spot that unless you're familiar with this pattern before, but bishops f one really nice move. And yeah, I'm, uh, I wish I would have saw that in the game, but so knight to d7 does indeed prevent that checkmate because if we try to do the same thing black has the option now to simply take because there's no longer checkmate at the end of this because the king can just slide over right okay so that's uh what black was doing defending that and then i believe i got the wrong move here as well um queen to e3 yeah it's one of those moves that are kind of hard to find i think sometimes these just queen moves can really change that that dynamic of a position but you don't think about them at least i find myself not thinking about that like i was really stuck on moving the knight you know knight a5 knight e5 that's what i just couldn't get out of my head and queen e3 is, is has a nice idea first of all we're making a, a serious threat black can't allow us to do this if we come in here with the queen we're gonna have all sorts of checkmate threats it's just not gonna be good for black but also, it has the follow-up point of coming over here and creating some different threats, you know, like we saw with knight a5 and queen e6. So very nice move, and it's something you want to keep in mind, right? Like, just sliding the queen up or over one square sometimes can make a huge difference in the position. So queen e3, all right. So c5 stops that, but then I already kind of talked about it. Queen comes over to b3, and now we're getting ready to set up some threats here and here, right? So... Black's in a mess, and it all has to do with the bishop that they never had time to develop, right? So knight goes back, trying to hold on, and then we've kind of already talked about it. Knight to a5, creating the double threat here and here. And you can save that one, but then you lose this. And like we looked at, it's checkmate in a few moves now, regardless of what um, Black does. So nice game. And um, I think, yeah, the power of the bishops, I think, is a good title for that. You can really see all of the different threats and how black didn't develop in time, right? And so, you know, remember, look at what black did here. One, one move with that bishop, two moves with that bishop, three moves with the same bishop in the first couple of moves. That's a lot of wasted time. So you want to really think through, before you develop a piece like this, you know, what's going to happen if my opponent starts chasing it around? Am I going to lose a bunch of time, right? Black didn't think through that. Um, if they would have played a, you know, just a different move, just left the bishop even, just played something simple like e6 or e5, get this bishop out first and then do something with that, would have been a completely different game. So anyway, um, 
yeah, I hope you guys had fun. Let me know what you think about this format where I don't have you pause. I just kind of give you some time. i um, trying to improve this as much as I can, make it as fun as possible. But uh, yeah, let me know what your score was and I'll see you in the next one. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.